Hey YouTube, Shea Bear 1000 here. What we're going to do today is we are going to put a set of brakes on this 2004 Toyota Tacoma. It has 382,000 miles on it and still going. And several sets of brakes. But we go through about a set of brakes a year. I know what you guys are thinking. Well, uh, we only go through about it every three years. Well, that may be so, guys. But the thing about that is, is how many miles do you actually put on it in those two to three years? Now, this truck here, these glasses on, it gets, what, about 80,000 a year? Because I know we've been together a little over a year. We got together when I did her brakes is when we first really started getting serious. Uh, last year in November of 2016, we put 80,000 miles on this together. So these brake pads right here, and they're the cheap ones, like the $20 ones. Um, they, they've got around 80,000 miles on them. Uh, that's pretty good for a set of brakes. Now this truck, by the way, too, when she goes to work, she don't go to work, clock in, be there eight hours, clock out and go home. This truck, from the time it leaves the driveway, it's rolling. I mean, she'll have a patient. She's got to travel just one way, 70, 80 miles. Well, that's 70, 80 miles back. There's, you know, 140, 150 miles right there, you know, just doing one patient. And she'll, she'll do sometimes eight, nine a day. Um, so this truck is constantly rolling. And plus, you know, our little adventures we take and everything. Uh, the car still broke down. It is running. It does run. It'll sit in idle. It doesn't overheat. But if you drive it, it wants to overheat. So I'm thinking there may be a head problem, a head gasket problem. I'm going to try something on that. <clears throat> That's another video, though. We'll do that together as well. But in the meantime, this, this is what we're doing today. We're doing the brake pads. These are easy. I didn't show you how to take the wheel and tire off because frankly you know, at the risk of sounding like an asshole if you don't know how to take a wheel and tire off you shouldn't be messing with the brakes I mean that's that's just my opinion I you know uh, someday if you guys want you know give me a couple likes mention it down below if you want to know how to change a tire in case you ever have a flat I will do a video on that to show you guys that but right now this this is what we're doing here. We're doing um, we're doing just doing the brake pads now. Some tools you're gonna need. You should need you should have a, a, a C clamp. There's a piston inside here. Now I did a video on a Buick which is similar. It's all based on the same thing. Some things are a little different, a little harder, whatnot. But you get the rough idea. It's basically you know it's on the same principle I should say. Uh, there's piston in here and you put your your clamp here. And on the back of this and it pushes together and it squeezes that piston back in here because as your pads wear that piston pushes back out uh, so first thing you want to do after you get it jacked up or whatever before you start doing this take your cap off of your um, your master cylinder because some fluid will come up and out so put a rag around it that could happen if it does don't be alarmed go I wasn't even up there now I got another problem no, you don't. Just make sure don't get on your paint or anything like that. Make sure you got it. I got a little rag or paper up there or whatever. Uh, whatever you want to call it. Napkin type thing. Just something to stop that from. And when you do that, squeeze them real slow. Now, we don't have a C-clamp. I'll show you how to use this screwdriver right here. This old antique screwdriver. We're going to use this, okay, to push that piston back. Of course, our brake pads. We're going to use those. Now these on this particular truck, let me get you back down here guys, on this particular truck, there's a bolt here and a bolt here. Now this, it's these are 17 millimeter. You can use a ratchet on the bottom, but you can't use a ratchet on the top because I don't know if you can see that. There's a brake line right here that gets in your way. So you need a wrench. Now most of my tools are in the trunk of the car, which is out in my shop right now. I'm going to go clear out and get it. So, what I'm using is 11 16ths. I did try it and it did break loose. 
So if you guys got to, just be careful. Start slipping on you. Try to find somebody that does have a 17 millimeter. If you strip these out, they're a pain. They're a pain in the butt to get out. So let's zoom you in a little closer here. And bring the remote out. There we go. A little closer so you know what I'm talking about here. Now this wheel is turned all the way to the right. This is the driver's side. Now some of them may be up front. If they are and you're on the driver's side, turn it this way. What it does is give you more room to work here like I said these are these are really easy so what we're going to do right now so really that's other than the jack and your four-way or whatever you use to take your wheels and tires off really that's the only three tools you are going to need socket or you know a ratchet wrench if you got the gear wrenches you know you can use it on both of them and yeah it's best to use a c-clamp a lot easier but I will show you how to do this but you got to be real careful uh, this started grinding a little bit. They're not super bad yet, but they are down and last year we did replace the rotors too. They're pretty pricey. You don't want to get into the rotors. So I wasn't planning on doing this or I would have gotten the tools, my other tools out, out of the trunk of the car. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take them two bolts out. And I'll show you how to push that piston back in so use this on the bottom one now some of these you may be able to take one bolt out I know like some Fords the older Fords um, you can just take one bolt out flip it up after you push your piston in and change your pads like this and this one you can do the same the same thing as well but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take one pad out and I'll show you the difference in these pads Here, see if I can get you up close this is the one we're taking off okay I don't know if you can see the thickness of that and this is the one we're putting on see the thickness the difference in those so yeah it these aren't really super bad yet but I can feel them I knew they were getting low so but that's all you would have to do one bolt you take them out but what we're going to do is I'm going to take this one out. <clears throat> they can be a little finicky because they have anti-rattle springs in here. But it's no big deal. Just be careful not to score up your rotor too bad. There. We're going to take this one out. Now you can see how thin this one is. You can't even see the line in the center hardly. Or that line right there, barely. Um, but it feels pretty good. So I'm going to put this one... I just took it out just for a second to show you. Now see, I could have just put the new ones right back in if I had the, uh, shoot, you guys know what I'm saying, the C-clamp that I need. But what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to stick this right in here and I'm going to push that piston back. And you just pry on it like that. So you can get in there and get some leverage. The reason why I did put, I put that, um, see it's starting to go back in. I did put that pad in there because I did not want to score up the rotor real bad. This is not the right way to do it guys, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do, right? So let's try to get this pushed back in here. And it is going. Um, what I want to tell you guys is tomorrow night, New Year's Eve, tomorrow night, what we're going to do for you guys, sorry about that, we're going to go live, and um, I don't know if I can, we, uh, we want to bring the New Year in with you guys, so tomorrow night now see this in here I'm between the piston and the brake shoe now or the brake pad the shoes are on the back but we're going to do a live feed for you guys tomorrow night bring in the new year at midnight so if you guys are interested stay tuned for that tomorrow night see it's going back yeah. so the screwdriver like I said it's a little now also, if you have a, uh, a tire iron, you know, it looks like a 7 or an L shape. That's a lot better. It's a lot sturdier. 
but I don't have it, of course. It's in the trunk of the car, too. So, let's just keep, just keep going with it. And it will, the piston will go back in. And you'll know it, it'll be flush right down in here. I don't know if you can see that. It will be flush. It'll be perfectly straight. So, and this is actually a little long. I don't know if I got anything else. Let me run over here and check for you guys. Uh, let me see. Try this. Whatever you can get to pry that over will work. Um, sometimes you just got to think outside the box. But this is see, a little long. The fender's getting in my way. But, I'm going to do that. We'll just keep going this way. I had to buy a new jack because our other floor jack is in the trunk of the car. So that way we, at least now we've got, which I just bought one of them cheap. It was on sale, got it for 24, saved 10 bucks on it at Advanced Auto. Got it for 25 bucks. It was originally 35. Okay, now this is all the way back. See how all the way back that is? That's, and it was out. Be careful not to hurt this. This is just a dust boot, but what it also does is keep your piston from getting rust. If you get rust pits on that piston and you go to change the brake pads next time, there's a seal inside here. It's like a square O-ring type deal. When you go to push that piston back in, it'll score that seal and you could start leaking here. So be very careful when you do that. So let's get this brake pad back out of here. The new one goes in exactly the same. The curved part, where are you guys at? The curved part right here, see how it's curved? It goes back towards that way. And this part comes out. Just like, just follow the curvature of the rotor. Make sure you get it in them anti-rattle springs. And I know what some people are going to think is, uh, well, if you get the higher priced ones, they'll last longer. No, they won't, because she always used the $40 and $50 brake pads, and still, uh, a couple times, she only got less than a year out of them. I like these mid-grades. They're, they're cheap, and they do last long. And besides, I don't know if you guys noticed, how most of the time, you get those, um, those expensive pads, and what they'll do is they're so hard, and they've got metal in them, They'll start squealing after a little bit. They'll start squeaking, and there's nothing wrong with them. It just, you know, it can't handle the brake dust, whatnot. So, get these in here. Like I said, they can be a little finicky. I can't really see, excuse my head, but I gotta see where I'm going here with this one in the back. This one's not wanting to go right there. There we go. Make sure the bottom gets in too. Like I said, just take your time. Any do-it-yourselfer can do these. There we go. Just like that, okay? Brake job is pretty much done. Then you slide this back down. Make sure them boots get in there tighten your bolts back up put your bolt back in there and this side's done other than putting the wheel back on it's done and these things a lot of people use never seize on them good idea now that brake stuff they give you in them little tubes do you want to don't use that really all it is is freaking vaseline don't use that shit but yeah if you want to put a little uh but these are covered the reason why I'm not doing it is these are all covered in rubber. So I, I don't have to worry about that. They're not going to seize up on me. And besides, I have them part once a year anyway. So they're not going to seize up in that time. But if you want to use an anisease, never seize, whatever you want to call it, you go right ahead. That's really, and to tighten these, they don't have to be super dynamic tight. Hit it. Hit it a couple good whacks. Um, same with this one. A couple good whacks. And it's done. 
Now what I have here is, this is the reason why I'm wearing gloves, guys. You know I don't hardly ever wear gloves, but the reason why I did was because you don't want these brake pads dirty. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to spray this off and clean it. Let me grab something out of the truck here. I love this wireless mic. I can keep talking to you guys and keep rolling at the same time while you guys are checking things out. Now what I'm using here, it's not brake cleaner. See what I'm using? Gunk, carburetor parts cleaner. It's on the same basis. It will clean that. It's fine. You can use this. It's no problem. The reason why I bought this was the other stuff was like $5 a can, $4.59, whatever a can. Of course, they were a little bigger, but I bought this was because it was $3.99 a can, but it was buy one, get one free. So I got two cans for four bucks, and I can use it on this. Move this other way. And all you're going to want to do is spray it off. Get all that brake dust off there. I don't know if you can see it running down there or not, but spin it too while you're doing it. Same way at the back. Get all that brake dust off of there. Now I'm going to take this and just kind of hold it right there. Spin it. This stuff will evaporate fast. So it's not, see all the dirt we've cleaned off of there? So, same way with the back. Let's do the back here. Now you can do this as many times as you want. I usually go through one can per side of regular brake fluid, but, or brake cleaner, I'm sorry. Uh, but this stuff's pretty good, it's for carburetors. So I think one can will probably get me. But as you can see, and just, you know, make sure it's clean. Because brake dust will cause a squeal. And unfortunately, there are dishonest mechanics out there that all it is, I meant to put that under there, but all it is, is brake dust. Well, you think, well, my brakes are squealing, it's time for new brakes. When all they'll do, they'll charge you for a complete brake job, but it's all they'll do. They'll pull the wheel off, spin this around, clean it up for you, and you go, oh, I got new brakes. No. Unfortunately, there are people like that out there. Now, when you get done with this, what you're going to want to do is set what we call set the brakes up. Because that fluid was pushed back in. Now what it's got to do is get the fluid back out. Now you do not have to bleed them if you do this, this way. Because you, you didn't break anything loose. You didn't break the bleeder loose, you didn't break the line loose, so you're not going to have, you're not going to have air in there. But you do want that piston to come back out. So before you just jump in it and take off, start your vehicle up, pump the brake pedal four or five times until it feels good and hard again, and you're good to go. That's how you set them up. Uh, because if you don't, yeah, your first initial push on that brake pedal is getting the fluid back down down to here, and which there are some there, but it's got to push that piston back out to set itself. That's what we call, you know, set up the brakes. So it's going to feel like you have no brakes. It will go almost clear to the floor. So don't be alarmed. Pump it up a couple times. It will be fine. If it doesn't, you have other problems. you got a leak somewhere whatnot. But that's how you do this. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to put this wheel back on. I'm going to go over and do the other side. There's no sense in showing you twice. You get the idea. I'm going to do the other side, and I'll be back with you when I get the other side on and I'll show you how to set the brakes up, how to pump the pedal. It's real simple, easy to do. So I'll be right back with you guys. Stay with me. All right, guys. Shea Bear 1000, we're back. What I want to show you is, I'm going to show you how to set these brakes up, okay? It's real simple. Now the brake job is done. I didn't put the other wheel on yet because I want to show you something. But it is done. It took me about, I don't know, five or 10 minutes maybe. So I'm going to start the truck up. What you're going to want to do is see how far down that pedal goes. It goes almost to the floor. Now let it back up. Do it again. Now you do this four or five times. And what that's doing is setting the brakes up. There we go. Now we're starting to get brakes. There we go. We got brakes now. Okay, good. So we're, we're all set. Uh, what I want to show you guys, 
was what you can do if you got wheels like this if you look inside that wheel that piece back in here I don't know if you can see it but that's your rotor if you see any heavy grooving or like this there's a sure sign your brakes may be getting low and see how black all this dust is on this wheel as opposed to the back the back's a little more clean of course yeah the truck's dirty but the front is more blackish uh, maybe I can get a good view for you on this side okay yeah let's see if I can get you back here all right see the back and then the front see how dark the front is okay that's brake dust um, that could be a sign that you, you know it's time to change your brakes um, but here's your rotor here's what I was talking about now you can see a couple little grooves here and you might be able to feel them but if they're like this you're okay it'll be fine now if they start getting in really deep then you're going to want to get a new rotor don't have it turned for the price uh, I don't even know if anyone turns them anymore I'm sure they do or mill them down whatever you prefer um, they they will uh, it's best just just to get new ones and, and and put the new ones on now these ones are a little bit harder um, because they're the old style where you got to actually take the uh, you got to take these bolts out you have to take this the caliper clear off and hang it somewhere you got to take the caliper mount which is this piece you got to take it clear off then you got to take this cap off and you got to take it's called a castle nut behind it you have to take it off in order to get this to come off then when you put it back on you got to preload that bearing it's another it, if I ever have to take these off again or grease them I will show you how to do that but since I didn't have to this time unfortunately I can't show you but I can show you something else that um, this thing creaks and groans and I think this is a lot of where it's coming from see this side this bushing right here um, right there there's a bushing inside there this is steel goes around a rubber bushing this is what you call a sway bar or stabilizer bar uh, now as you can see this one see that's the rubber coming out what happened is it swelled up there's a there was a leak here uh, maybe power steering fluid or transmission fluid I can't remember now what it was but that oil gets on these right here whoops right here and it swells them up and pushes them out now what this does is is when you're going down the road and you go around the turn it keeps your your vehicle from leaning too far and it just feels real funny it keeps it more stable and uh, we, we do need to get alignment it pulls a little to the right but I'm pretty sure they will not align it line it up until I get that fixed because anytime you do front end work like that ball joints anything like that you should have it lined up once you're done have it put back in line so but anyway guys there's there's a brake job um, this is what I was talking about take your cap off and when you're done of course look down in there and make sure it's full see it was a little lower but when I pushed that like if you just topped it off and then realized your brakes were bad well yeah you're gonna have some squirting out of there I didn't I was fortunate enough last time I checked it when I seen the brake fluid was getting a little low it wasn't low low but it was lower than normal I knew it was about time and then we started feeling them I'm trained for all that you know SC certified so but so I knew it was about time so that's why I did not top it off because I knew it wasn't leaking and I knew I was going to have to push some pistons back in and wasn't no sense in wasting it. Yes, this engine is very dirty. The engine compartment is, but we take it mudding. She's off-road all the time, uh, going to patients. Um, but yes, it does need cleaned. But anyway, guys, um, that's how you do a front brake job on Toyota Tacoma. Now, they are, like I say, the same general principle they're on the same basis um if you do one you can pretty much do pretty much any of them now you start getting in volkswagen bmws subarus they're a little different and they could be a little more complicated but in this case it's all pretty much the same you got a truck like this old car like this um you know you can do it i you know i would feel comfortable telling you if you if it's you're a do-it-yourself and you can if you can change an alternator you can definitely change brake pads and you probably have before but these this video is is a kind of a how-to on for the people that don't know but they're 
they're comfortable doing it. If you don't feel comfortable, by no means don't do it. And but by all means, get a friend to help you. There's no sense in paying over a hundred dollars, guys. Let me turn you around here. Um, to take it to a shop and let them do your brakes if you can do it, because a total start to finish, if if I had the C clamps. Um, jacking it up pulling the wheels and everything i can do this in 20 minutes both sides and that's another thing too guys i want to let you know uh the brake pads when you buy them they come in four there's four of them in there and there's a reason for that don't say well i can't afford to do both sides yeah you can because you get them for both sides so do them both please there shouldn't be any reason why you you only do one side at a time don't do that it's it's not good you're just going to have to do it again. You're going to cause more damage and more money later on. Uh, but like I said, uh, any questions on any any um, auto tech questions or anything like that you guys may have, uh, comment below in one of my videos. Uh, you know, I'll get back to you as quick as I can, and maybe we can work together and help you solve your issue. Uh, the, you know, there's all kinds of things that we can do ourselves. It's people look, you know, they look under the hood at this and go, Oh my God, where do I start? You know, what's this? What's that? You know, which is understandable. But if you know what the problem is, then you can f then you can fix it. Google it. Uh, ask me. Uh, YouTube it. YouTube it. You know, well, I got to check engine light on, and I had to code scan, and it says it's an O2 sensor. Where's that at? It's in your exhaust pipe. Okay, find it. Some of them have five, six of them. It just all depends on the vehicle. Find it youtube it google it do your research because it's it's kind of like changing a spark plug if you can do that you can change an o2 sensor uh but some vehicles you cannot reset the code which yes you should i know check engine light you go yeah i know what that is my gas cap's bad uh, but if that's the case what if something else is going wrong and you don't know it because you, you know it threw another code but your check engine light's still on you won't know it. so it's always good to try to uh try to try to, to to fix the problem if you can I understand sometimes you can't and you know there's no harm in that just if you can try to get it checked out especially if it's your only vehicle um in cases like that also um this one yes it does have a check engine light on and yes i do run the codes frequently but the reason why it has a check engine light on is because someone had what they called bypass the uh catalytic converter because i guess it was clogging or something it's still on here but what they did was run a pipe down into it so of course that's going to change you know the gases the the exhaust and everything that's coming out to the o2 sensor so yeah it's going to throw a code because it's not getting the right reading but i know what that is but i still periodically check the codes to make sure it didn't throw another one that something is going bad uh and you not know and then later on go well damn if i'd have spent 50 bucks it wouldn't cost me 250 now and sometimes it's hard to do you can't do you know i mean we just got lucky that you know this happened on you know pay weekend so you know so we we got lucky um because if we'd have waited until next week we would have been buying rotors again but anyway guys i want to say thanks for watching remember tomorrow night hopefully i can get this up today or tonight for you but new year's eve 2017 which is tomorrow night if you want join us we're going to we're going to go live maybe about uh 11 50 p.m so that way we can bring the new year in with you guys she got a couple party favors you know brr, brr, things you blow through little hats and stuff so it's going to be fun but we want to spend it with you this year we're going to do live feed for y'all so with that being said oh also i i've got to take this off this before i forget this thing's all busted the bug shield or whatever you want to call it now there's only a couple screws across here. They're Phillips screws. I got to take that off. What happened to that's uh, an amazing story that um, before we got, I hit the record button. Before we got together, she was going down the highway and a wheel or tire came off the back of a truck or a car and hit that, jumped up, hit the roof and the windshield and, and that's all it broke. She got lucky. So anyway, guys, again, Thanks for watching. Hope this helped. Uh, any questions, technical questions, uh, let me know. If I don't know right offhand, I'll Google it for you. I'll search it. We'll do our research together, whatever, just to help you guys out and help me out. Maybe I'll learn something if you've got a question that I've never run into before. Love to help. Love to research things like that. And we both learn and we help each other. So 
that being said, again, thanks for watching, guys. Monkey's in the house. She's running around doing laundry and stuff like that. So, all right, guys, I just want to say um, Happy New Year to you. Uh, whoever um, is watching live feed, we'll talk to you then. If not, we'll see you in the next video. All right, guys. Well, that being said, Bruno's out back. He's tied up. He's going ape crap. All right, guys. Uh, Shea Bear 1000, I'm gone. Bye-bye, guys. Thanks.